In this video, we're going to cover the basics of how trigonometry works. We're going to start off zoomed in on the Cartesian plane between negative 1 and 1. We're going to get the unit vector and then rotate it all the way around till it draws out the unit circle. Radians is the arc length drawn out by the rotating unit vector. Arc length in radians is a one-dimensional vector. So although the red arc and the blue arc appear to be the same, in vector space they're not. The red arc is positive one radian and the blue arc is negative one radian. In degrees, angle AOB equals 45 degrees and angle BOA also equals 45 degrees. We could equally say angle AOB equals 315 degrees and angle BOA also equals 315 degrees. But when it comes to radians, angle AOB equals pi over 4 or it equals negative 7 pi over 4. But angle BOA equals negative pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4 because radiance is a vector, so it has direction. The arc length of one full revolution will be equal to the circumference of the unit circle. We know circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. In this case, r is 1, so the circumference of the unit circle will be 2 pi. That means half a rotation will be half of that, which is pi, and a quarter of a rotation will be a quarter of that, which is pi over 2. Cos is a function that takes in the arc length and outputs the x-coordinate. It's obvious that the x-coordinate will be positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, and the x-coordinate will have to be negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Arc cos is the inverse function where we input the x coordinate and it will output the corresponding arc length. Now, because it's a circle, there are two corresponding arc lengths the one on the top and the one on the bottom. Also, the x values will need to be in the domain between negative 1 and 1. So, this makes it obvious that cos a equals cos of negative a because this is a reflection around the x-axis. And what this means is if there's a negative inside the cos function, you can just simply throw away the negative. If we reflect about the y-axis, we will get the negative value. Therefore, cos a equals the negative of cos pi minus a. Sine is a function that takes in the arc length and outputs the y-coordinate. So it's obvious that it has to be positive in the first and second quadrant, and it will be negative in the third and fourth quadrant. Arc sine is a function that takes in the y-coordinate and outputs the corresponding arc lengths. There will be two unique arc lengths, one on either side of the circle, and the domain needs to be between negative 1 and 1. It's very easy to see that the sine of negative a is equal to the negative of sine a. This is because when we take the sine of negative a, we flip it about the x-axis, so of course all the y values become flipped. This means if we have a negative inside a sine function, we can just pull that negative out in front of the sine function. When we flip about the y-axis, the y-coordinate stays the same. Therefore, sine a has to equal sine of pi minus a. Cos is on the x-axis and sine is on the y-axis. So if we want to get from the x-axis to the y-axis, we just need to rotate a quarter of a turn in the positive direction. 
So we can see that cos A is equal to sine of A plus pi over 2, or a quarter of a turn. The inverse will also be true. So we're from the y-axis and we want to get to the x-axis, we have to rotate a quarter of a turn in the negative direction. So sine A will be equal to cos of A minus pi over 2. As we rotate this unit vector around, it always forms the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle where the two smaller sides are the sine and the cos. Pythagoras tells us that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the two smaller sides. Therefore, sine squared plus cos squared equals one squared, which equals one. Tan is a function. When you put in the arc length, it outputs the gradient of the unit vector. Gradient is always rise over run. The rise is always sine and the run is always cos. So tan is a composite function where tan A equals sine of A over cos of A. If the unit vector does a half turn, it will form a straight line and have the same gradient. Therefore, tan A equals tan of A plus pi. We'll also notice that the gradient or the tan will be positive in the first and third quadrant and negative in the second and fourth quadrant. The gradient will be equal to zero when the line is level and whenever the line is completely vertical, the gradient or the tan will be undefined. Arctan is a function that takes in the gradient and outputs the arc length. There'll always be two solutions where that gradient cuts either side of the unit circle.